this video we're going to talk about Versa alarms, events and notifications. The agenda for this video, first we're going to review what alarms are, then we're going to review what are the events, lastly we will switch the notifications and the last step for today is going to be the review of how we can configure our custom email servers or maybe SMS gateways. So let's proceed. First of all, what are alarms? We have alarms as the messages which are being sent from the controllers or maybe from your hub devices or it might be something that is sent from your spoke devices. Any devices which have VersaOS installed on them can generate alarms which are going to be sent to the analytics system. You can see them in the analytics screen if you will click on the alarm section. And here on the right you can see all the alarms that are being generated for this particular organization. Next, now let's go to the events. As soon as your alarms leave analytics and travel to the director, they become events. Actually, the director can generate certain events on its own. For example, there might be events about a uh, director running out of space or maybe out of memory, but if it's something like alarm which was sent by the analytics, it will also receive it and show in the event section. So here's an example. In the monitor screen, if you'll click on the director, you will see all the events that the director generated itself. If you want to switch to something that was generated by the analytics and sent over to the director, this will be in the monitor screen in the section of your provider organization, uh, organization. And that's where you will see all the alarms that were sent to the director as now they are called events. Now the interesting thing, by default analytics doesn't forward anything to the director and that is something that you need to manually configure on your own. To do this you would need to go to the analytics page uh, in the administration page of the analytics, you would need to open configurations, log collectors and configure remote log collector as it's shown on the screen. So here's the place where you need to go. You need to open analytics, administration, log collectors and add remote collector. So let's view this in the GUI. So first of all, when you will go to the analytics, we will go into the administration page next. Log collectors is going to be our next menu to select. And here we will see remote log collectors. So what you would need to do is to add a new one with the following settings. So I'll give it just some random name or the name of your director. Here you need to specify the IP address of the southbound uh, interface of your director. The port which is going to be used is constantly uh, 20,514 and the transport should be TCP. So that's all that you need to do to configure a log collector forwarding of the alarms from the analytics to the director. So let's proceed next. Next we're going to go into the overview of notifications. So what are the notifications? Notifications are the messages that are going to be sent based on the events to the destination email or phone number or that you will specify. So any event that happens on the director can be sent as notification to you. Uh, to be more specific where you can see notifications in the director screen, there is going to be administration menu and in the administration you will see notifications configuration. So that's where you would go to configure them. Now, in a little more details about notifications, you can create multiple notification rules. Uh, notification rules support wildcards and you can deliver notifications via email or text messages to multiple destinations. Conditions for sending notifications can be based on the alarm type, device type or device name, uh, alarm text, severity or maybe number of occurrences of the specific event. In a little more details about notification rules. So all notification rules are being evaluated when there is a new event. So it means that the system will not stop evaluating um, notification rules when it will make a hit with one of the rules. And each of the notification rules consists of the tenant for which it was created, destination uh, to which it should be sent, and multiple condition rules. 
uh, to show this graphically, here is our director screen. So we need to go to administration, notification configuration and notification rules. Both of these rules will be checked. If we will find a match in this rule and send email notification to this address, it will still try to evaluate the next rule to see maybe this rule uh, matches the condition as well. Inside of this rule, we have destination where we can send um, information or notification when something happened. So you can specify one or multiple emails. You can also specify where to send carbon copies, what should be the subject, what should be the message, and you can also specify uh, a phone number to which text message uh, should be sent. Phone number can be specified only one, while you can configure multiple email destinations. In the conditions, you can create multiple rule sets. So for example, in this condition set, which is 1.1, we can have multiple conditions. They all will act as the end statement. So for example, right now I have type equals to app stopped. If I will add the device name, which should be like, let's say wildcard branch to wildcard, this means that both of these conditions needs to uh, hit for this condition set to be considered as the match. So the same is in the uh, condition set number two. And the system will send notification to this email when the condition set number one or two will be uh, hit by the, by the rules. Now let's review condition sets that we just saw. So they can contain multiple attributes or conditions. Those can be like alarm type. It can be a, a type that signifies what is happening, what has happened. Uh, it might be interface went down or BGP session down or up, or maybe uh, we're out of memory on one of the devices or director and so on and so forth. Device name, where you can specify the actual device that needs to generate this event for us to generate notification, or it can be a wildcard used to match certain group of the devices only. It can also be alarm text. So if in the alarm text we we have certain match criteria with the wildcards, uh, based on this we can also generate notifications. Or it can be severity of this event. If the severity is above a certain level, for example, we can send notification. Uh, the last two conditions uh, that we'll review are the count and wait a minute. Count and wait a minutes always used together with one of the above four uh, attributes or conditions. So it means that count cannot work on its own. Wait a minutes cannot work on its own as well. They will all only work with one of the previously specified attributes that they will match. Uh, the principle is the following. If the event of certain type is happening this number of occurrences within number of minutes, only then we will send notification. For example, if you set count to five minutes to two and the severity is critical, it will send notification when during two minutes we will have five events with severity of critical and more. Next we're going to review variables. In the message that you will send to your phone number or to your email address sets, you can use certain variables. And here they are. It can be device, type, severity, and tenant. Let me show you what I mean. So in the director screen, when we will open rule and we see the text message, if we will enter text, the only thing that's going to be sent to the recipient is these four letters T E X T. If you want to actually include something like the device name that generated certain event, you would use something like this device. And in this case, uh, the this phone number will receive four letters text, space, and the device name. Also, you can include the severity, the type, and so on. The same can be included in the subject of the email, which also going to be substituted by the actual device that generated uh, that or another um, event. Here is another example how it can be done. And lastly, custom SMTP and SMS servers. By default, Versa provides you with the SMTP server and SMS gateway, which can be used for the test purposes. If we'll go into the director's GUI, 
you'll see in here in the SMS uh, SMTP menu, you will see hidden values like unavailable host, unavailable SMS provider, and so on. So it means that we implicitly inside system configured those values, but they are only in the test regime. If you will generate too many events or too many text messages and emails, we have the right to block your system. So it means that we recommend when you go into production to change SMTP server to the server which you can actually control and which, which you should use. The same is re in regards of SMS gateway that you'll be using in your system. This concludes our video. I hope it was informative for you and thank you for watching.